Alright, so now that we've sketched, we're going to jump into Keynote and we're going to learn the basics of how animation works in Keynote. A lot of people know in a program like Keynote or PowerPoint how to add animations in a really simple way, but most people never take it to the next level to actually learn how to modify those animations to really get the result that they want. And this is critical if we're going to use the animations in video. We're not using these in a slideshow, we're actually going to use them as part of the animations in our video. So the first thing that we want to do is have a document and I've just opened up a new slide presentation here and just the white one. We don't need any of the themes or anything. We're just going to work with this. So we're just going to go ahead and select anything that's on here and delete it because we don't need any of this. We just need a simple object to start out with and that's the first thing. You have to have something to animate on the slide. So let's go ahead and hit the plus and then we're just going to choose to put in a shape. So we'll jump over to the shape options and there's a bunch of different options here but we want a basic for now. But you can see there's different things under like geometry, objects, animals, nature, food, symbols, education, arts, science, people, places, activities, transportation, work, ornaments. There's so much here that you can use. So you can always look through there for what you need. But for right now, let's just use a circle. And once you have an object, then you can start to animate it. So to do this, we need to go into the animation options. And there's two ways to get there. One is to hit the three dot menu and then choose animate. The other is to tap on the object and then choose animate. Either of those will get you here. And so now we're in the animation view, but we're selected on an object. So we're actually going to animate on that object. If we are not selected on an object, say I just click on the slide somewhere. So I deselect it. Then we get the option to add a transition. And we'll talk more about that later, but transitions are animations between slides. So let's go ahead and click on the object. What we can see here right off the bat is there are three options for different types of animations. There is a build in, which will bring an object onto the screen. There's add action. And action is something that will happen while the object is on screen and there's add build out. A build out will take the object off the screen and you get different options depending on which of these you select. So let's go ahead and let's add a build in. When you click that, you get the build in menu, which has all the options for different build in animations. Unlike a more advanced program like After Effects or Blackmagic's Fusion, you can't make up your own animations inside of Keynote. You can make slight modifications to the different animations that they give you, but you can't just come up with your own animation out of your head. You really need to take what's in your head and translate it into the different animations that they provide for you. This has the benefit of being very simple. It has the drawback of not being very customizable, but it is a great place to start learning the basics of animation. You have many different options to choose from, so let's just try one here and see what happens. Let's choose the fly-in. And you see, it just flies in from the side. So that's why it's a build in. It comes on to the screen. And it's important to understand how these different animation options work because these are the controls that you have available to you. So it's good to familiarize yourself with them so that you know the different options that you might want to use based on the sketches that you had. So for example, we saw that fly in animation, which brings that object in onto the screen. But you might be looking for something else. So for example, there's fade and move, which is similar but not the same. So you've got some different options for different things that you can do. Another example would be the wipe, right? Going to do something similar, but it doesn't move there. It's stationary while it's coming in. So depending on what you sketched out and how you want your animations to take place will determine which of these animation options you choose. All right, so we can leave that there. Let's just say that we used a fly in then we'll exit out. Once you've chosen one, then that will appear here in your little timeline. You have your build in, your action, and your build out. When you tap on one of those, you actually get a few parameters that you can change. And this is where you can make adjustments. Where it says change up at the top will actually let you change the whole animation. So if you decide you don't like that animation, you'd like a different kind, you can change it there. Then you have the duration, which is going to determine how long that animation takes. So if we want this to fade on faster, we can just drag that back to say half a second it goes much quicker. If we want to take longer, we could drag that out, say to two seconds, push play, and it flies in much slower. In many of these different animations, you can determine the direction. So for example, this one, we have a number of different directions that we can choose from, including random. And depending on which animation you've chosen, you may have more or less parameters that you can adjust. So it's good to get familiar with the parameters that can be adjusted on each of these animations as well. Okay, delivery, this is something that is really for text. So you've got by paragraph, by paragraph group, or by highlighted paragraph, depending on how you want your text to come on. And then you have your start option. 
This determines when your animation begins. Currently we have on tap and after transition. On tap means that if we were presenting this like a presentation, we would need to tap it to make the animation happen. After transition means it will happen immediately after this slide transitions onto the screen. If we had another animation currently here, we would have the option to play after previous. But because this is the first one, we don't have that option right now. And then you can also set a delay. So if I choose after transition, I can then set a delay for the amount of time I want it to wait after the transition before it happens. Generally, we won't use on tap because we're making a video. We're not going to actually be using this to present. So the on tap doesn't do us much good. Okay, let's go back here. So those are the options and then of course you can delete it. So let's just take another look here and see what it looks like to add an action. So you can see these are a different color and there are different options here than we had on the build in. So for example, let's say that we really wanted it to jiggle after it comes in. We can choose the jiggle and it just gives it a little bit of movement there. Then when we hit X, we go back and we can see this. And I want you to see when you add an action, it breaks it down into a smaller timeline because you can add as many actions as you want. You're limited to one build in and one build out, but as many actions as you want on an object. So you can add another one. Say we want it to flip after it jiggles, then we hit X and you can see these two are together. Then we hit the back arrow and we can see we have a fly in, multiple actions, and we don't yet have a build out. So let's go ahead and let's adjust these so that you can see different kinds of things that you can change. So this one has duration and then it has intensity. So there can be a small, a medium, or a large jiggle. We'll keep it at medium for now. And then we go to the start and we want to change that to after build one. Then go back and then we'll go to flip and we'll see what we can do there. Flip has a duration and then a direction controls. But unlike the fly in, it only has two options. It can flip left or it can flip right. Can't flip up or down. Then you can choose the number of flips that it does. So you could decrease or increase this if you want to. And then of course you can choose on tap or after build two. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's just play that through. So we'll just hit the play button at the top. See this flies in, jiggles, flips. To exit the preview, just pinch your fingers together. So you see how you can string these actions together to make more complex animations. So one thing I would really recommend doing is just going through, putting an object on the screen, going through all of these different options so you can see what they do, see what parameters you can adjust on them, and that will give you a better idea for how you can translate the ideas that have been in your head and you put into your sketches into this slideshow, which can then become a video that we can put into one of our video projects. Keep in mind that some animations are only available on certain objects. So for example, there's the right on animation, which can only happen if there's a stroke on the object, not just a solid fill. And we'll look more at that later in one of the example videos. And there are also some animations that only apply to text because text gets special types of animations. And if you apply an animation to an object and it looks like it's not doing anything or it's not doing what you would expect it to do, chances are that's because that animation was built for text. A really important part of animating in Keynote and animation in general is trial and error. You have to be willing to try things out, see if they work, and when they don't work, try adjusting, changing them. And especially in Keynote, because you can adjust very little manually, you often have to just try several different transitions and adjust the few parameters you can in order to get the result that you want. Remember, Keynote has the advantage of being quite simple. You don't have to deal with keyframes or splines or anything like that that you'd have to deal with in a more advanced program but it comes with limitations. Another thing that I really want to show you here is the build menu. So if we tap this menu in the top right while we're in the animation mode, we get this build order menu. And this is where we can actually see things and rearrange them. So if I grab number three here, I can actually drag that up and make it number two and number two will become number three. And if we had a bunch of different objects, we could arrange those here. We'll see this build order panel quite a bit. You can see you can adjust when it starts and you can adjust the delay from here. So this is a very, very useful one to have and you can preview from here as well. So without going into the full preview, you can see what would happen. You can also hit this select button to multi-select different animations to adjust them all at once. And then remember, if you want to create a transition on a slide, you just need to not be selected on an object while you're in the animation mode and then choose add a transition. Transitions can help you move between things. The most useful transition for our purposes is going to be the magic move transition. The magic move transition will morph what's on one slide into what's on the next one. So we'll need to use that from time to time when we run out of our ability to animate on an object on a single slide. We then need to move to another one. And we'll see that as we go throughout this course, but just be aware of this magic move transition.
because we don't have another slide. It just shows it fading out, but that's where it is when you need it. And of course, there are some other transitions. A lot of them are too gaudy to be useful to us, but some of them might be as we go along. So also experiment with the transitions and see the way that they impact different things. Hit none for now. To get out of the animation mode, we just hit the done button. And then we can actually come in and you know adjust our objects. So in the next video, we'll talk about adding and formatting shapes.